Hey everyone, it's Julie from Sprouts and Stems. Today's video is a follow-up from my video on Monstera Adansonii care that I made a few weeks ago. I had no idea that video would become so popular, but it seems that people really liked learning about this Monstera, so I figure I'd create a follow-up video on how to propagate this plant. Monsteras can be propagated really easily in either water or potting mix, and I think that's one of the reasons why people love them so much, because they're such a cool looking plant and they're so easy to make more of. So I've got this huge Monstera adansonii, or Swiss cheese plant here, and this was the one featured in the original care guide video. And this one I've already propagated from many times and it's grown like a weed from the nodes that I've taken cuttings from, so it's definitely ready to be propagated again. So you wanna start by identifying some healthy vines to cut off with some healthy looking leaves. And you wanna make sure that you have plenty of nodes to make plenty more new baby plants. So the nodes are where the leaves meet the main stem and also where the aerial roots meet the main stem. And nodes are where new growth comes from. So if you don't have a node on a piece of stem or vine, it's literally not going to do anything. You need to make sure you have nodes. So nodes are where new roots and leaves grow from and they're a critical part of propagating plants. So you can see that I've got two nice healthy pieces of vines that I cut off from my plant and I'm attempting to use the scissors to point to the nodes so <laughs> hopefully you can see that it's just where the leaves meet the stem like I said. And cutting next to the node will trigger new growth to sprout from it. So you want to cut below the node so that when we put the stems in water the node will be underwater and the roots will sprout from it. Now, if you have longer pieces of vine similar to what I have here that have multiple leaves and multiple nodes on them, you can actually make a bunch of cuttings out of just these two vines. So I did end up making some shorter cuttings where I actually cut on both sides of the nodes. And some of the cuttings I kept a little bit longer with two leaves on them instead of just one, just to have some variety. And then those are just the leftover pieces of vine that we don't need and they won't grow by themselves because there's no node. So we're just gonna throw those away. And now you're just going to put those cuttings in a jar or container of your choice of room temperature water, making sure the nodes are underneath the surface of the water. And right next to that jar, I have a little uh, container of cuttings that I recently propagated in potting mix. Now the process of propagating cuttings in a uh, potting mix is exactly the same well, almost exactly the same as water propagation. The initial process is all the same, except for instead of putting the cuttings in water, you're just gonna put them into moist potting mix, or you can use sphagnum moss if you prefer that. And just make sure the nodes are underneath the surface. Make sure to keep the whatever potting medium you used uh, evenly moist when the roots are developing. So now you can place your cuttings in bright indirect light and just refill the water levels as needed because it will evaporate a little bit over time. And if you notice the water getting like really gross, you can just totally replace it all together when that happens. Probably within a week or maybe even a few days, you'll start to notice teeny tiny roots forming around the nodes. and within a few weeks or i usually go by length of the roots when the roots are two to three inches long because that time can can vary a little bit so 
When the roots are two to three inches long, you can pot up your cuttings into potting mix and then you've created a whole new plant that you can keep or give away to a friend. You can even leave the cuttings in water permanently and just instead of potting up your plant in potting mix, just have your plant in water. And that's a really nice look too. Just one thing to note, your plant will probably not grow as fast or as large being in water, but it definitely is a really nice option. If you propagated your cuttings into potting mix instead of water, then you're all set and unless you want to move them to a bigger pot or something, there's really nothing you need to do. And that's it for how to propagate Monstera adansonii. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it showed you how easy it is to propagate this plant and I hope you feel inspired to try it on your own Monstera or another vining plant that you may have. Please subscribe to my channel if you like this video. It helps to tell YouTube that you like my content and I'd really appreciate your support in that. Thanks so much for watching everyone and have a great day!